All right, so hot on the previous video about the cigars that I got, we have the Gran Britana Petit Bellicoso, Ramon Ayones from 2012, um, British regional edition. It's the short torpedo or Petit Bellicoso. Um, it's a 52 ring gauge and about four inches, four and a half inches. It's four and three quarter inches. Well, that's actually just a touch under five if you go right to the tip there. It's quite a, a, a sort of Claro colored wrapper. Um, these were always quite light in color. Um, I've had several boxes of these um, about uh, eight, nine years ago, I smoked these. Uh, these were available retail around that time. Around 2015, 2016 is when I was smoking. When I was smoking these, um, the Cuban Cigar Club in Newcastle, which no longer exists, um, I bought their last box, retail box of these, um, and I think I also bought the last retail box from uh, Black Swan. I still have the receipt um, in the box, and um, when when I heard that they were sort of going out of stock, I just hunted around and just bought the ones that I could get. Um, and uh, I would say that I've smoked maybe three or four boxes of these back then. I haven't smoked one in years now um, since then. Um, I have one box, as I mentioned in my previous video. It's a full box which I'm not breaking into, so for the foreseeable future. Um, so I was very excited when I saw these because, as I say, I really, really like these cigars. I have no idea what time will have done to these. Um, 2012, so 13 years, 12, 13 years on these. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see. The aroma is really quite mild. I, I don't know the provenance of these cigars. I don't know how they've been looked after for, for the 12, 13 years of their life here in the UK. Um, so I don't know if they've been kept at correct humidity all that time. They feel, you know, probably around, you know, 62, 64 humidity percent humidity that they've been kept at quite a low humidity which is good for long-term storage um, it's a bit lower than I would do personally but um, you know for long term I would probably be doing it at around 65 um, and then for regular you know around 68 69 and 70 I suppose 70 is the the general commercialized standard 70 70 you know humidity and um, temperature but um, 68-69 is what I usually do and um, I would say these would have been considerably less than that It brings a smile to my face because to get a Cuban cigar nowadays with a good draw is a relief. It's got a beautiful draw, very open. Well, when I say very open, it's open, but there's a nice little bit of resistance, the right amount. You don't want it to be feeling like you're sucking on air. You want some resistance. Um, it's the, the pre-light draw as I say, is very good. The flavor is uh, quite mild, uh, cedary. Yeah, I mean, it's cedary and a little bit woodsy. And that's pretty much it. It's very mild. These were mild cigars, I will say that. I hope this isn't an anticlimax. It's been so long since I've had one of these. It's been years, literally years. I hope my taste buds are okay. I am extremely tired today. Did not sleep well.
So a little bit harsh straight off, which you'd expect on, on first light. You know it, uh, you just want it to fully ignite before setting it down. I'll just set it down there for a minute or two. I shall catch you soon. Extremely mild. Um, the aroma is just to die for. It's got a beautiful aroma. You know, when you go into a Cuban cigar shop that has a lounge and you just get in and you get that waft, that aroma of Cuban cigar smoke, you wouldn't normally get that when you're smoking yourself. You'd have to set your cigar down, go out of the room and then come back in and then you get that beautiful aroma. But this has a really sweet, spicy aroma. The draw itself on the in the mouth, it's quite bland. It's quite, quite uh, really very mild, it's creamy. I would say that that sweet spice is there for a second on the draw, but it dissipates immediately. You're left with a bit of an oily residue on the tongue, on the mouth. There's a very faint um, sort of dry, um, like a, just a tea biscuit, that kind of thing, like a very basic plain sweetness. Um, You do get more on the retro hell. You definitely get more on the retro hell, but it, it's it's a very mild flavour. It, it's it's it's, a, it's interesting because the aroma, like I say, the smoke in the room and the retro hell completely belies the smoke that you get in the mouth. It's completely different. It's a very very almost bland flavour in the mouth. Sugar free biscuit. I was trying to come up with a description. I'm not really great on descriptions. I try to keep things simple, but sugar-free biscuit would be good. In other words, no sweetener either. So it's got no sweetening at all. So it's a biscuit, it's not savory. It's not um, savory, um, but it's not particularly sweet either. So in the mouth, I would say some kind of baked goods, which is sugar-free. So no sweetness, very little sweetness. Sweetness certainly is in the aroma and a little bit in the nose on the retro hill. And you do get a bit, as I say, on the draw, but that does dissipate almost immediately. It does bring back memories though, I will say that. It's been so long since, since I've had a good quality Cuban cigar. Um, it takes me back to those days. It does, it really does. Um, in the, I was spoilt, I really was in those days. I was buying Cuban cigars overseas. There were no problems getting stuff in overseas, no customs, none of that stuff. And I was smoking good quality cigars all the time, uh, especially in the time before I discovered filtered pipes. Um, so I was smoking cigars. I remember there was a particular year, I think it was 2017 or 2016, that I pretty much for a year just smoked cigars, probably two or three a day. Um, and in those days I was smoking fantastic cigars, not necessarily special editions or limiteds or regionals, those two, but just regular, um, one of the ones that I smoked was the Connoisseur number one, A. Chapman. I smoked a lot of those. I smoked a lot of the Petit number two from Monte Cristo, a lot of those. Um, and, and one after another, they were just great. They were really fantastic cigars. I wasn't really bothered with Cohiba or Trinidad or any of those. They were too expensive even then. Um, and. I had them from time to time, but I, it wasn't something that I was chasing after. I was very happy with the H. Upmans, really enjoyed the H. Upmans, and the Monte Cristos, the number two, the Petit number two, the Petit Edmundos, fantastic cigars. Later on, they brought out the smaller sizes, like, um, uh, what's it called, the uh, Medio Corona, is it called, in, in the Monte Cristo? Um, I think the Cohiba also has a, a small, I think it's also called Medio Corona, or something similar to that. But those were relative, relatively new additions. But when I look at the cigar, just the feel of the draw, and when I look at the burn line, the stacking ash, 
you know, I'm just not used to it anymore. And I'm not smoking Cubans that much at all anyway. Um, most of the stuff that I'm smoking now is non-Cuban. So it's a real treat. I'm gonna try and make these few cigars last. In the mouth, they're a little bit, bitter is the wrong word. Um, they're a little bit pithy, you know, um, the pith of nuts, which is a little bit bitter, but it's, it's a natural bitterness. It's not a cigar that's, I hope it's not a cigar that's gone off and that's why it's bitter. It's just, um, you know, that's a very possible uh, outcome of the age. You know, it also could be that it may have not always been looked after perfectly well. So there could have been dry periods and then it's gone back into a humidor and brought it back. But when it's out of the humidor for a significant amount of time, even if you do manage to rescue it and rehumidify it, during the times when it was dry, the essential oils that are in the cigar are evaporating. And once those evaporate, you can't bring them back. So that kind of can happen sometimes if this wasn't fully you know, stored um, in an ideal situation. Smoking it, I feel that it has been in a humidor um, because otherwise this would have split by now. Um, and um, to feel it is a little bit dry, but there's enough give in there to let me know that this has been stored probably in a relatively low humidity, but still stored in humidified conditions. In this country, it's perfectly possible to do that, even not in a humidor. So if, there's, uh, if this was kept in a cupboard, in a drawer somewhere, with a bunch of other cigars, perhaps, um, you know, in this country, the humidity is fairly stable most of the time. Sometimes it goes up, but most of the time. Um, I've mentioned this before, um, Philip Shervington, who used to own Shervingtons in central London, but more latterly worked in JJ Fox's for many, many years. And I think now he's retired. Um, he told me that he used to keep boxes and boxes of cigars in the trunk of his car throughout the year um, without any ill effect. And he said that, you know, in this country, I can't speak for other countries, but in this country, cigars, they've got quite a bit of leeway um, when it comes to storage. Obviously, you don't want to leave them out for years on end without any kind of protection at all. So it's possible that you had them in a bag of some kind, in some kind of sealed bag or um, some kind of situation where they weren't immediately exposed to the environment. Um, and in that kind of scenario, cigars will last quite well, even if they're not in a humidor. But I would not encourage you to do that. I think the Petit Bellicoso is a particularly nice Vitola as well. Um, and I, it has a nice feel in the mouth. For me at the moment, the highlight of this cigar is just the experience. It's the smoking experience. Possibly some nostal nostalgia in the mix there. Um, but um, just look at the way that it's stacking. Nice burn line. They do smoke quite quickly, they're, they're, even though it's nearly five inches. But you know, a lot of that, the first inch is a taper. Um, so you, you're not really going to smoke very far beyond that first band. The draw is exceptional. The flavour is a little bit off, I will say that. It could be better. Um, and like I say, I don't know how these have been kept, so that could possibly be an effect. And it could also be just the age of the cigar. Um, I have spoken about this before, that there are people who talk about sick periods in cigars. I, I, I have no evidence on this. It's just stuff which I've read. Um, so there are people who talk about a second wind when it comes to cigars. So you can have your cigar, your Cuban cigar, and it might be green for the first, say, three or four years. And then you come into a period of, say, between five and ten years where it tastes really good. And then 
between 10 and 15, it may start to have a sick period where it's not that great. And then it comes into its second wind, so to speak. And then from then onwards, it's really at its best. Um, this may well be during that sick period and therefore it's just conjecture as far as I'm concerned. Um, so I don't actually know if it's a thing or not. If I would smoke the cigars that I've got downstairs and it would be the same, then I could say maybe there is something in it. I am getting a little bit of a coffee flavor on the finish. It's quite a long finish. Recreal is musty. Yeah, the flavor is not great, but uh, I'm gonna set it down now for a bit because I've been tugging on it for a while. So I'm gonna let that calm down for a bit and we'll see how we go. All right, first thirds in, it's ashed of its own accord. Um, you can see it's rolled well. You can see the peak of that in the middle there. It's perfectly rolled. Hence, you've got a good bone line. So the first third, like I've been saying, very mild. Flavor slightly off, maybe the age, maybe some hiccups along the way with the way it's been stored. I honestly don't know. Um, but still very smooth, very smooth. Um, perfect construction. Such a wonderful thing to, to have a Cuban cigar with good construction. It's ridiculous to have to say that. It's ridiculous that it's, that it's something special, that you've got good construction on a Cuban cigar. The retrohale is nice. The retrohale is, is musty, it's aged. It's got that Cuban aged tang to it. Um, it's just on the draw itself, on the flavor in the mouth, which is, it could be better. I'm hoping it'll still develop. The thing is with these cigars is that they do smoke very quickly. Um, even though it's nearly five inches, which is a robuster size, but like I said, because it tapers down there right at the last inch or so, inch and a half, you know, there's maybe another, if I'm lucky, another two inches, if I'm lucky. Good smoke output. Like I said, I can't fault the construction. Construction is absolutely sublime. Retrohale is good. Retrohale is, it's peppery, but it's smooth pepper, if that means it. It's like a burn rather than pepper. It's like a smooth burn through the nostrils. You can retrohale quite a bit of the smoke. With most cigars, I sort of temper the retrohale. I only take a small percentage of the retrohale. Um, but this one can take quite a bit. And it, it does have that aged, Cuban flavor and retro hill. Um, so there we are, we'll see how we go. Oops. Left the lathe on. Um, all right, coming towards the end of the second third, sorry, um, just in the middle of making that pipe a bit dirty. Thankfully that sort of iffy flavor has gone. It's extremely, extremely smooth, velvety smooth. It does mean that it doesn't have a lot of complexity. There isn't a lot of levels of flavor, but it's very, very smooth, very oily, which is very nice. It's a very nice bit of oil on the tongue. And what you get is just a faint Cuban tangy sweetness, spicy sweetness on the draw. It's kind of almost like it was on the retro hill earlier on. So it's kind of balancing out now, um, and it's got really good flavor, just very mild. Um, the retrohale is still a little bit fuller, um, so adding the retrohale to the drawer just gives it that bit of extra oomph. <laughs> yeah, now it's really, really getting there. Um, even though there isn't a huge amount of flavor on the on the draw, but when you combine it with the retrohale, because it, that bitterness or that iffy flavor is gone, 
it's just pure smoothness and, and you're, you're enjoying the retro hill because there's nothing overshadowing it and you've got the oily residue on the tongue it's beautiful it's sublime it's taken half the cigar to get there i just hope it's going to last for a fair bit still very very nice time for the regional band Too bad. This goes back to a time when the bands really didn't come off very well at all. Hmm. Difficult to put this one down. It's one of those really Moorish cigars it warms up a little bit you don't want to overheat it obviously but it just becomes very very moorish you just want to keep drawing getting a little a little touch of the almond paste now which you get sometimes towards the end of a cigar i used to get that very often with cuban cigars not so much more latterly but um this is <coughs> when you get a cigar that you uh, enjoyed many years before and it kind of just brings it all back it's a it's a really special experience. It's been a long time since I've had that. And I will say that don't get this usually on a, on a, on a New World cigar. There's some fantastic New World cigars that I enjoy, but that sensation, that Moorishness and that warmth, that sort of welcoming um, sort of last third and a half of a Cuban cigar is unparalleled when you get a good one. <coughs> Alright, well, we'll come back in a little bit later for um, final remarks. Nice bit of ash there. I thought I'd better hit the record button before it drops. So there we go. I'm going to drop it now so it doesn't drop all over me. And um, I think we'll do a summing up, although I'm still thoroughly enjoying it. Loads of smoke. Hmm. I'm actually going to smoke a little bit more before I sum up. It's kind of starting to want to go out. I'm going to take the band off. We'll see how long we can go with it. But let's do the summary. Visual construction. I love the Vitola. I love the short Bellicoso shape, the Petit Bellicoso, whether it's the Monte Cristo Petit Number no. 2 or whether it's the Bellicoso Fino from um, Bolivar. Um, whichever ones they are, I just like the Petit Bellicoso. It just works for me. The, the full number two shape, the Pyramides, is it's a lovely cigar, but it's a long cigar, so you've got to have enough time for that. So whether it's the Monte Cristo number two, the Zigolo six, is it? Um, a Chapman number two, uh, Particus um, E2, whichever one it is, they're very nice retailers. I do really like them, but I really much prefer the Petit Bellicoso. I love the Vitola. Um, it's very attractive. It's a handy size. <coughs> um, it does smoke a little bit quick, obviously, because it's short. All right, that's gone. Um, the wrapper on this is a nice color, um, a little bit darker than Claro. The boxes that I've got downstairs are definitely more Claro. They're, they're quite a bit lighter, um, but that's you know that's normal. You get different gr um, gradients of, of hues. Um, in cigar wrappers and that's why when the rollers are doing it they're selecting cigars by color in order to put them in a box so if you get a box of cuban cigars and, and the colors are all different then the chances are that um, it's been made up from a, a number of different boxes somebody's put a box together um, they've got the empty box and then just put in 
boxes from other, um, they put together a box of 10 or 20, but from different sources. Um, anyway, um, so visually, um, a beautiful cigar. I love the cigar. Um, the wrapper on this one, as I say, was a nice sort of chocolatey color. Um, a little bit oil, a little bit oily on the wrapper. Um, <clears throat> um, just very nice. Uh, I've got nothing to complain about it. Um, obviously, as I've been saying throughout, is about the age and about the provenance of the cigar. I can't really comment about it. Yeah, the, the, um, but overall, the visual aspect, the visual uh, construction for me was beautiful. And nine out of ten for visual construction. Mechanical construction. Um, it felt before I lit it. It did felt it feel a little bit hard, and I was nervous that it would be a really tough draw or that it had dried out. But no, absolutely not. The the mechanical construction on this cigar was absolutely spot on perfect draw perfect amount of resistance good burn line plenty of smoke plumes of smoke throughout combustion was good right until this point here right at the end um, which is normal for, for cigars that the combustion goes towards the end um, I have absolutely nothing to complain about the combustion of this cigar and I'm giving the um, sorry about the mechanical construction I'm giving it a 10 for mechanical construction. Um, in terms of flavors, um, this was most definitely a game of two halves. So the first half really had to get through something. I don't know what, maybe that, that, that first half of the cigar, maybe the age had something to do with it where maybe the bottom half, because that's the, where the exposed foot of the cigar is, possibly some of the flavors had evaporated. It's, it's possible. Um, a little bit more than maybe the rest of the cigar. Um, I don't know, um, but the first half of the cigar was very bland. Um, the first third was even a little bit savory, um, which I wouldn't have expected. Usually on a Romani Honest, you'd expect that sweet spice. Um, I did have the, the sweet spice on the retro head, even in the first third, but not on the draw. On the draw, it was quite savory, mild, but savory, um, with a little hint of, of the sweetness to come. Um, so the first third wasn't great coming into the second third and the second half of the cigar the smoothness really became sort of the key here that bitterness or that savoriness went away and what you got was a very very smooth cigar so the age has smoothed it out a little bit it certainly has mellowed it as well because it's not as full-on flavorful as it might be um, but it certainly intensified as it got towards the end and it matched the retro hill um, and it was a much more balanced experience um, so the second half was sublime, really was. Um, really up my alley, uh, really up my alley. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I don't like very full on cigars. I don't like very strong cigars. I don't like very peppery cigars. Um, this one was just, it's why I love Romani Yonis. I Sadly, I can't smoke them very often. Um, the the Ras, the, the Romani Yonis uh, specially selected is a superb cigar and it epitomizes these flavors. Um, so for flavors for me, were it to have been good from the off, you know, this would have got a 10. Um, but um, despite the fact that the first third wasn't that great, I'm still going to give it an 8.5 to a 9 uh, because it was fantastic. Um, I'm really excited to see what the other ones do, how they smoke. Um, so 8.5 to 9 for flavors. Um, in terms of uh, fullness, um, as I've said, pretty mild cigar throughout um, certainly got a little bit fuller you know mild plus towards the end but didn't really even get to medium for me um, so a pretty mild cigar um, in terms of strength did get some nicotine towards the end um, so I'm gonna say a mild to medium a mild I would say for the first two thirds and in the final third because it's the end of the cigar it certainly ramped up a little bit so the, f the final third was closer to medium but I'll say mild to medium as an average overall for the cigar um, in terms of an overall mark, you know, I'd love to give this a 10. I can't because of that first third. Um, so I'm going to say a 9 out of 10 for this cigar. Um, and a lot of that is because of the experience. As I said earlier on in, the, in this video, the experience for me was just fantastic. I know there's a lot of nostalgia in there. I, I did say that. Um, so it's possibly clouding my judgment a little bit. More positively, you know, rose-tinted glasses and that kind of thing. Um, but I thoroughly enjoyed the cigar. It's been a long, long time since I've enjoyed a cigar like this. Um, and I guess it, it just goes to show you what your mental approach, how much of an effect it can have. Because I was 
sort of nostalgic about it, it I'm sure it enhanced the overall experience. Anyway, that was the Ramona Yones original edition Petit Bellicoso from 2012. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.